Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. That's right. Welcome to Science Faction. Mm -hmm. I am your host, Robert Timothy, half archaeologist, half comedian, all man. With me as I... <laughs> which half of you is comedian? Which half of you is archaeologist? It's left and right, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was top and bottom. No. It wasn't like body and soul. Like one is... uh, absolutely not. The body you... of a scientist and soul of a comedian. You just heard my two co-hosts with me as our research scientist, Jackie. Jackie, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. She is good all to see woman, you guys. let me tell you that. That's right. 100%. And of course, our comedian host, Damien Mercado. Damien, how are you? And I'm all woman. I mean, man. <laughs> Definitely, man. That's right. You're all Herm. I'm He's all, all Herm. Damien, how you been? Uh, doing good. Doing good. By the way, uh, how have you been? How's Novella Watch? Novella been Watch. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard previous episodes, we're watching Dr. Steve Novella. Uh, used to be an idol of mine, now arch enemy, because mm. he made a mistake on his famous science podcast, SGU, which I corrected, sent him a very nice email, very politely worded. And I've yet to hear a formal correction, and so therefore, Ugh. Novella Watch has reached its, I think, eighth consecutive week of unfulfilled correction. Eighth I, consecutive probably, probably week? Like I think it's five. like four. <laughs> your reputation is at stake, oh, Dr. That's true. Novella. We, it's your reputation or your face, Novella. Science Brawl 2014. Talk some sense into, into him, Rebecca. Talk some sense. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's jump into science articles. From molecules to particles, this is Science Articles. Some interesting stuff has gone on since our, our last podcast. Some neat science articles are out. A very interesting one comes right here out of San Diego from UCSD, and it has to deal with stimulant use. Fairly minor amounts of stimulant use among people and how that can affect their overall reaction time and, and other things about them. So when we talk about stimulants, they're referring to cocaine and uh, amphetamines and prescriptions such as Adderall. The study was done using uh, fMRIs. We were watching the brain impulses of people, and we can see that certain regions that account for things like impulsivity might be in affected. The test that they did was to have the person sit in front of a screen. If an X appeared on the screen, they would hit the right button. If an O appeared, they would hit the left button. And if right before that appearance came... They got meth, regardless of which button they got. <laughs> oh, yeah. They got, there was yeah, meth when on top. did the little flyer... I'm picturing like a flyer at the supermarket with the little ticks that you pull off and it says, free cocaine, yeah. come on down to UCSD. Yeah, actually, you're, you're joking aside. <laughs> you actually do bring up a good point that I should clarify. These people aren't on substances at the time. They're not on cocaine or methamphetamine as this is going on. These are just people who have had experiences before. And in fact, very small experiences. They're talking 12 to 15 experiences in their lifetime with cocaine or meth. Or, or so a battle. recreational meth user. Uh -huh. like just somebody who, just, who dabbled just, in college. Yeah, yeah just casual just, meth. Just an occasional <laughs> meth thing going on. Yeah, like are they targeting car like college students? How they many are. college students are having that little well, stimulant use? They're the only kids with pockets deep enough to afford the Heisenberg Blue. Everybody else is forced <laughs> to go for a much cheaper Good meth. Good point. So you, Good like, point. You know, there, there, is a, there is a classy hipster meth crowd, yeah. The yeah. Adderall is certainly easy to get, at least. Yeah, and I, 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 they also didn't specify if they meant, you know, snorting Adderall. I was going to say, a snorting a prescription. Than, than taking the, the thing. But what they found was, um, so remember, you, you hit one button if it comes on the, uh, if it's an X, one button if it's an O, and then no buttons if the, the thing goes off. Now, the interesting thing is they have a control group, which has no experience with these kind of stimulants. Uh, Noobs. Liars. Yeah. Dorks. <laughs> so the dork group, they, uh, they would compete against them. Now, the stimulant group, they actually were quicker on the draw when it came to just pressing left or right button. They were faster, which is interesting. Yeah, let's do it, bro. I'm ready, bro. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. You went done fast, you went done right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I do it fast. <laughs> uh, by the way, that's, that is my disclaimer to every woman before I take her home. <laughs> Uh, but the, the stimulant group did have one problem, which is they were unable to stop themselves from pressing the button when they heard the sound. So that impulsivity control isn't there. And the idea is the part of your brain that regulates certain things like that impulsivity control can get damaged by the stimulant use and then thereby leave you more vulnerable to more use of drugs because you don't have that impulsivity control. Also leave you vulnerable to not, not being pressing able to... buttons when, when yeah. you hear noises. Like, well, no, my humanity's, question... humanity's evolution was dependent upon our ability to stop pressing a button <laughs> once noise. That's right. But my question is, at what point will a lawyer use this in court when oh. someone got raped? And they're like, oh, no, no. 
He's done 12 bumps of cocaine in his life, therefore he can't restra- well, restrain his you, impulse. Where no is the noise. The yeah. noise right, is actually right, the right, word exactly. no and hit, kicking and screaming. Yeah, he didn't have a button. There, there are plenty of cases of that. And, and what's interesting is there are semi-legitimate cases of people who, you know, have, for whatever reason, have certain brain defects or damages or something, and they're not able to control themselves. Do not give Damien this information. That's right. <laughs> Listen, we should my stop legal now. defense has been crafted for years. I'm just waiting <laughs> on the felony to bust it loose. Don't worry. But this may be a permanent thing. They don't know yet. Can you regrow that those parts of your areas of your brain? Can you teach your brain to work around them? You know, is there enough neuroplasticity to work around these type of issues? Is this a serious thing? Is this going to be a real problem for people who've had minor stimulant use uh, later in life? Did they? Um... <sighs> Did they ever take it to a level where not just pressing a button, but we were actually making a more vital decision, you know, like how they do like driving tests for people, you know, to see if their reaction time is a certain amount, you know, just something that might have a level of danger or a level of consequence that a button might not. No, I, th- this was just a real simple test. And, and, you know, one of the things we should always think about when we're, when we're talking about these kind of tests is causation correlation. You know, we brought it up before. Is it that the stimulant use is causing these people to you know, destroy parts of their brain that therefore they're unable to perform the test well? Or is it that people who already have parts of their brain that might have these damages both don't do well on this test and are more likely to use stimulants? How old are these people? College. College age. So they're all in college. Yeah. So was there any sort of control group of like age where reflexes are theoretically slower? Well, the control group is the same age, so I mean, you, you wouldn't have it. Very like, maybe it not, has nothing to do with this minor use. Maybe just because they're young and nubile and excited. Yeah, they but, are hot. But, <laughs> I mean, they are nubile. I mean, I'm picturing them erotic. sort of Adonis, like, well, loinclothy. That's why you have the control group, which is the same age. Flabby and, dudes, and you would, gotcha. Yeah. The dork group. Remember we talked about the, the dork, dork group, group that oh. didn't have the stimulant use. So they were as fast as draw? No, they were, they were actually slower. They were the slower draw. to draw, but they could stop. Yep. Okay. So I have some I have some questions for my panelists here. Uh, number one, since they were better at the initial reaction time, which was surprising, but less able to control themselves, should we give cocaine and meth to people for whom being just quicker without having any thought process involved would be useful, like defensive linemen or track stars or vigorous lovers? I completely agree with this 100%. And I'd say let's set up a program, like a government program, to help these people. Let's funnel them into career tracks like Daredevil, mm-hmm. Stuntman. You know, uh, Steve O's been out of commission for a bit. We need like the world needs <laughs> He's another Steve. Apparently O's. sober now. <laughs> yeah, you guys, how much more it sucks doing those things when you're completely sober. Absolutely, the world needs another Steve O. Are you trying you're to say there. that you're out there listening? <laughs> those defensive linemen and track stars are not doing occasional cocaine and meth. I'm saying they're not doing enough. Clearly, uh, we're, we <laughs> need to pump them. But it's such a little people. amount. Listen, when San Diego wins the Super Bowl, when the Chargers win the Super Bowl because they're all cocaine D line. Yeah. <laughs> Is a force to be reckoned There's with. There's a front. great story Lawrence Taylor has about just doing coke all night the, the day before a Super Bowl and then going out and scoring like career high sack record. So, I mean, Lawrence Taylor could do it. <laughs> Anybody could do it. If, right. uh, if Lawrence Taylor could break a personal record, right. then it, imagine how it would be. I mean, to that extent, Bobby, you could be the defensive end for the San Diego Chargers. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because I have been called the Lawrence Taylor of science podcasting. So. Really? Really? Yeah. Is yeah. that by Dr. Novella? No, by Lawrence Taylor. No. Dr. No- <laughs> Dr. Novella has yet to address. He's, That's right. I think if he, if he, if we wrote I thought, an like email, in separate circles, like you heard through the grapevine that he was calling you names. Oh, then I would be then I'd be even madder for Science Battle <laughs> Royale 2014. Who are the vigorous lovers we're thinking of? Is there is there one in particular? Um, I you know I I'm sure there's quite a few that we don't know about. They don't necessarily list themselves. Have you Craigslist. seen Boogie Nights? Like, do you, are you aware that like cocaine was like a, like a it was, they drank it like water? There was a daily recommended dose of cocaine. Mark Wahlberg was a very vigorous lover. Uh, number two, is this damage permanent? And if so, should we reconsider Adderall usage? Because even if Adderall doesn't have this effect when used properly via prescription. We all know, we've all been around plenty of people who save up their Adderall and then snort it later, you know, they use it at parties and stuff. Is making it available to kids in such an easy fashion going to lead to possible long-term brain damage when they misuse it? I think it it seems to me like it's permanent. Regenerating brain cells is pretty tough and regenerate we know regenerating nerves is damn near impossible um sure but and I, like I the never impulses di- themselves i don't know if that could ever come back i never discount neuroplasticity because sometimes brains just can do some very interesting things with yeah. wiring and stuff yeah or tap into something they weren't using previously mm. but I, I don't know it's just I, maybe it's just you sort of hear your whole life doing x amount of drugs will damage you forever mm. and like you can't help it i know that my brain is an egg 
And the right, moment I do exactly. drugs, it's like frying that egg right. on a pan. <laughs> exactly. Which, how people survive their very first <laughs> drug experience is beyond me. What's interesting That's is they, at least. they actually yeah. referenced that old commercial in this article because the really? doctor was talking. And that commercial is, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs. So they're actually saying, this is how screwed up your brain is when you're fucked up on drugs. And his whole thing was, it's not, this is your brain on drugs. It's, this is the brain of somebody who has once done a drug. You know, so uh-huh. it is actually a more profound statement as uh-huh. far as avoiding certain stimulants. Yeah. You know, big meth is going to defend this in Congress <laughs> big time. They're going to go right. down like big tobacco. They're going to have doctors on their side saying, Can you listen, imagine if ever it was since, big meth? Well, thankfully, the lobby has taken a huge <laughs> hit ever since Gus Fring has mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> exactly. All the funding for big meth has dried up mysteriously. <laughs> All right. On to article number two. We're going to talk about the, the Genghis Khan of grizzly bears. So for those of you who were with us last week, we talked about Genghis Khan and how he was able to spread his genes all over Asia, and he's the direct ancestor of one-eighth of all the people in, in certain parts of Asia. Very, very evolutionarily successful human being, despite being a very bad person as an individual. They found a, a similar thing going on. Morals in, hold you back. That's why. That's the. That's, right. that's why the dark. I'm the only one guy who's rooting for the dark Jedi, yeah. and Genghis Khan would have too. Know that everybody. <laughs> uh, they found a, a brown bear uh, when doing why it, Y chromosome analysis of a bunch of brown bears. They found that most of them share almost the exact same Y chromosome, and it sounds like there was one just roaming brown bear pussy hound back in the day who made his way, and it has to do with a little bit of how brown bears work. The females tend to have more solidified territory, kind of stay in a similar area. The males just go vast distances and wander around. He was also able to outcompete his competition because of how well he could ride a horse and shoot a bow. That's right. So, uh, <laughs> that's why he's the Which Genghis is something Khan to, exactly. of grizzly bears. As, yeah, he right. had great military tacticians. He was yeah. excellent. Yeah, by the way, other bears don't organize well. So you could yeah. actually do this solo. Like, if you're the only bear who can ride a horse and shoot a bow, like, yeah. you could travel for a long time. That's how he was able to cover such great distances, too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they found that basically most uh, bears from Norway all the way through Alaska share essentially the same Y chromosome or very similar one, meaning they all have a similar they, – they're all the descendant of the same male in a very short amount of time, uh, some, sometime in the last probably a few thousand years at most. And if that is true, so if, if one bear is doing all this, then we have a couple questions. Uh, number one, what advantage – did that one bear have that made him such an evolutionary success over the other bears? Um, other than obviously the bow and the horse. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought Damien hit it. Not having to pay child support. Like, oh. Being that bear courts are terrible at prosecuting fathers. But, like, that, it, I agree. He would have that advantage over humans, but he wouldn't have that advantage over other bears because they would all have that. So what did this bear have other than the bow and arrow, other than the horse, other than the lack of child support laws? What did this bear have that the other bears around him did not? I'm going to go out on a limb and say superior sperm. Okay. I'm going to say uh, he was the only bear without traditional family values. And while the other bears were monogamous and okay. stayed with one mate, mm-hmm. Just a at some point they have to go hunt. And when there's another bear, they, 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 there's kind of a covenant in the bear community that no bear is on the hunt for Poon when I'm on the hunt. It might be one of those. Yeah, like his hunt... Were there different hunts, like Poon hunts and then food hunts? I, or think, I think he was just... Sort of opportunistic... I think he was just the, uh, the, you know, the Wilt Chamberlain of bears. I mean, he probably, he probably had a huge bear dong, too. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a hanging dong aspect to this particular bear genetic story? Do bears have a hanging dong? Oh, Are they yeah. internalized, though? What's what? a, I don't know the anatomy of a bear penis. Is it like... It, it's great. Let yeah. me just say, that. we'll start with fantastic. It has spiky guard hairs. <laughs> uh, it's about 20 inches, and yeah. they come about a pint of semen. Hmm. Pint. Fills up a, a pint thing perfectly. Or an abdomen. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> Bear, human. So you're going to go with big dick and you've got lots of sperm, right? Is that the way it works? Yeah. Or, okay. or at least superior swimmers. Okay. So it's not, it's not the size of the gun, but the impact of the bullet. If you think about it, this bear had to, or at least his descendants would also have to, after him, make it between that Norway to Alaska. So I feel that this bear was, was like Cain from Kung Fu, and he was just a wandering bear that set about righting wrongs. And as he entered every bear village to take on the bully bear, he was seen by the female bears as virile and nice and a, and a good lover. And so therefore, after he defeated the evil bears he was then allowed to mate with bears along the way and because of his wandering lifestyle he continued on until he had populated the entire continent see I johnny think... bear seed yeah like, except he spread bear seed that's right making bears well first of all if that were true you would be called johnny bear seed because you also tend to spread bear seed around <laughs> we all know you just sneak into the zoo a lot yeah 
I'm picturing, you know, I agree. I think he was definitely a wanderer, but in my mind, it's it's playing out a bit more like that show. I didn't know I was pregnant, where he's jerking off all over the place, and all these women are sitting on it, and then nine months later, they have a baby in the toilet, or they have a bear baby in the toilet, so they can play dumb that they didn't know they were pregnant. That's a very. I, I don't know how likely it is for you to just sit on the semen and get pregnant. Now, oh I'm no! Not on doctor. the show, on you the show, that's how it always happens. That has never happened. <laughs> I know, but that's ridiculous. There are multiple women out there who will go on television to say that's how they got pregnant. How do they respond? How does the lie detector test work out? <laughs> wait, I don't think... wait. what's their story, though? Is their story that there's a, there's a whole group of college guys who just come and, like, jizz on a toilet seat yeah. and they jump on it? Yeah, or, yeah and they must have sat, quote-unquote, must have sat on it and, because they're not having sex with anybody. And they're virgins. How, and, like, when I sit on things, when I sit on a toilet seat, I normally put the center, like, where my butt, where, where you know, where, <laughs> yeah. where my waist you comes out of on right the over. seat. If yeah. that were true, they should be getting horrible infections from fecal matter on toilet seats nonstop. <laughs> and they should slide off the seat if it's all over the seat. Like, like come as slippery as shit. <laughs> Gentlemen, I agree with you. I'm just saying TLC has a different take. Wow. I feel like somebody should be held accountable. Let's do a follow-up show <laughs> called... I lied. I knew I was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, right. What if the bears... They have that. It's called Maury. The bear community legalized gay marriage. And just as every Southern, wise Southern senator has been warning us, you know, basically every bear is going to go gay now. And he just was the only non-gay bear. And that's why he had to wander. In order for his species to survive, he had to wander up and down a large mating area. Okay. Well, he could, he could take it. You think he was like a homophobe bear or like... Oh, he was definitely homophobic. <laughs> okay. He was the Senator Ted Cruz of, of the ancient brown bear society. So ironically, homophobia turns out to be genetically selected for in brown bears. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> it's a science podcast. We You're are breaking me. borders here. All right. Second question. And this one really would be more just for Damien. Damien, how would you mimic this bear's play of skills? You know, as a guy who's been in the game for a while... I could never cover that ground. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's kind of like uh, there's some guy in ancient Japan that's always going to be better than you. I feel like this guy is just a legend. He's like Genghis Khan. Like, I'm, I, Believe it or not, I'm starting to doubt whether or not I can beat Genghis Khan as the most successful human being from a because of the bear? standpoint. Well, I mean, to find out that the bear and Genghis Khan are an elite fraternity. I mean, okay. both be, in both being able to ride a horse and shoot a bow as well as being able to dominate genetically. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to doubt that maybe amongst the other... 7 million people, let's assume, th you know, 3.5 billion males that I may not be the most genetically, like I'm starting to come to that realization that Aww. I may not be the best genetic. So you wouldn't know how, to... I'm sorry, Damien, that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is salmon on your penis. Damn it. That is oh, how man. you get the grizzlies. Uh, well, hopefully I don't, this loss of points doesn't kill me and finish my story. Well, listen, <laughs> to be fair, he, he had sex with pretty much all of the female grizzly bears around at the time, or his sons did. You've still had sex with a lot of grizzly bears. I mean, as far as but how many yeah. how many have come to how many of those pregnancies yeah. have come to term? But uh, you have had sex with what a dozen, two dozen grizzly bears. Yeah, and, and like bears. And we don't live in bear territory. You you yeah, have to visit yeah. zoos and wildlife sanctuaries. It's it's hard to find bears now, and they're I, they're endangered species in many places. All right, on to uh, uh, the last article of the day before we get some other stuff. They did a test, and uh, this was one of the great things about science is you find stuff you don't expect. And this was a test that was not designed to do anything like what it found, but it did on accident, and, and that's what's really neat. So their goal was to study how snakes work in their environment. And for those of you who know, there's a huge problem with Burmese pythons, who are native to, to Southeast Asia, that have gotten loose in the Florida Everglades and have ruined the environment, destroyed mammal populations, have done horrible, irreparable damage. What species specifically? Raccoons have diminished 99%. Um, lots of other mammals as too. Birds as well. They're eating the bird things. If they took out Floridians itself, like, oh, I mean, like the guys uh, in the backwoods, I mean, like, would, this, would, would we be really yeah. trying to kill <laughs> would this it be python in the news? that much? <laughs> then at least there'd be an upside. Yeah. Right. But no, unfortunately, we don't have that right now. Now the they're just killing meat markets. Yeah, now they're killing all the animals we need to keep a ecosystem going on, and, and it's and it's pretty bad. So uh, they were going to do a, a thing to see how these snakes move around, and so they captured twelve of these snakes. They put radio collars on them. They were going to let them all back in pretty much their original spot, but they couldn't get clearance from Florida Everglades, who were like, "No, this is a state park or national park or something." And they're like, "No, we hate these snakes. You can't put them back." So what they did is they put six of the 12 back where they were supposed to be, and they took the other six in, like, plastic containers. They can't see anything. They drive them 20-some-odd miles away, let them go. And what they found was they expected them to just reestablish a new area where they got dropped off. No, these snakes made an immediate beeline right back to their How long did spot. it take them? 
uh, some of them took uh, quite a long time, but they were moving at top speed. Mm-hmm. So they were going as fast as they possibly could. They had a control group for the ones that they just left there. Mm-hmm. Those guys are just kind of going around at their normal days, everyday speeds. These snakes are booking it in a direct line right back to where they're going. And five out of those six snakes made it back to the exact spot. And the, it's the six made it close. Did the other one make it back to Southeast Asia? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're going home. I'm the only one. All the way. Hey, All the way. I'm the only ambitious one, yeah. <laughs> So this is a very interesting because it means these snakes are navigating. They're navigating in some ways that we probably can't understand. One of the by the stars, actually by the stars, is one of the, yeah. the methods that they think they do because other snakes apparently do do that. But by the stars wouldn't explain it all because you would have to have some kind of sense of where you've been and how to get back there. You couldn't navigate celestially just from the stars. Maybe I... uh, maybe snakes have a like a base system that's so deep. That none of us, you know, we can't hear it or sense it, but it's, <laughs> yeah, right. it's deep and they can hear that for miles. I thought they had something. Um, Snoop Dogg's new album. Sort of, sort of similar to sharks where underneath the jaw, there's sort of a. Uh, or, compass? Uh, yeah, some sort of internal compass that sort of. It might be that. And it might be. But this is. With the the, what's really interesting is this is this shows a very, very good homing skill. The ability mm-hmm. to make it back so quickly, to be very intent on making it back. It also is very important for people who are trying to eradicate these snakes to know. Because if what their eradication plan is, we're just going to take them far away and drop them off, that's not going to (laughs) work. And also, they should know if you're trying to catch a snake, you should know its habits. And if you know that it's always going to come back to the same area, then you're much better off at trying to catch and kill these. This explains why I've never seen a lost python poster on a on a that's true on a, <laughs> oh, on a yeah. sign or anything i've never seen that because they all find their way home even though it is the second most common pet after house cat in america uh i, I believe dogs are much more common than pythons uh well i mean they're in a, they're in a close third okay. i mean but i think dogs think so? are infinitely more common and then you have other things like gerbils like and I, i've met birds, very few yeah. people with with dogs but nearly everybody i know has a python. Literally all three of us in this room have dogs. <laughs> yeah. And you have more than one dog. <laughs> and none of us have pythons. I have walls. I keep the pythons in the walls. <laughs> I, they, they're much more at home there catching rats. And uh-huh. we... So question A, which kind of goes along with one of Damien's comments, if these snakes are so good at getting back to their home, why the fuck aren't they all back in Burma? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. You got to want it. That's why they're, they're not, they're not a very motivated species. Or at least like, I can understand if you're like, no, there's an ocean in front. Fine. I want to see a whole bunch of dead snakes on the Eastern seaboard (laughs) of the United States trying to swim into the ocean and dying. Or at least stowing away on a transcontinental shipping barge. On a barge, Damien? Last time I checked. Snakes like planes. Boom, boom, boom. (laughs) Um, where was their home pre-Florida? Like were they is so this where part they of from? yeah like was this part of that I, I remember reading a long time ago something about like a ring of, of black market exotic animal smuggling is this sure. so saved they, animals or is this so what happened is uh, these animals began infesting florida um, some of them were pets that were let go okay some of them were in pet shops in 1992 when hurricane andrew came and just wiped florida out and yeah. basically released them i was everywhere. in that hurricane oh, as wow. a matter of fact all of these things led to this self-sustaining population of pythons in Florida that are just wiping out native stuff. And they had a big hunt. I was so, going to say, is this the hunt that yeah, was like had, a year or two They ago. had a big hunt where they had 15 hunters come out. Yeah. Out of, and there, there are supposed to be tens of thousands of these out there now. Guess how many of these pythons the 1,500 hunters caught? 500. 3 million. 68. <laughs> 68. By the way, this study caught 12. So <laughs> give four scientists the yeah, right. fucking reins to it. See what yeah, do, do you think other states are like, okay, like other southern states that all pride <laughs> themselves on hunting? Well, if that had been in Arkansas, we'd have caught uh, <laughs> yeah, right. up in the upper 98th percentile of those snakes. <laughs> they're hard as hell to find, man. They blend in really well. If they're in those like swampy aquatic areas, they can sink under the water really easily. They're, they're very hard snake to catch. I'm they're, picturing like a female snake decoy, like with a little bikini on. That they're like, shh, get out. He'll come out. Yeah. He'll come out. A plastic, like a, like the Jenna Jameson. Yeah, of, yeah, exactly. Of, of, of like pythons. how you get like how you get uh, turkeys to come around. You have a little female. What could attract snakes? What? Well, how could you gather them all in one place? Like a like a Ooh, huge like rat? a guy playing. Yeah, an Indian dude with a flute. <laughs> <laughs> That's racist. That's cobras. I was like, or like a, if a python was here right They're now, he'd be same. wildly offended. Like, oh, They're do we all, all look same. alike snakes? <laughs> Wow, I'd, I'd like You're to apologize all devil. to all of our snake listeners out there. <laughs> that was wildly racist, and I'm incredibly sorry. We need to speak in high tones. So, it's, like when we're talking about a... snakes, we need to speak in high tones so they yeah. can't hear us. That's right. Hey, let snakes suck. We got a bunch of mice here. Better not tell anybody. <laughs> Don't let the snakes know. 
Uh, also, will this lead to a Python-based GPS system for your car? Could you just have a Python that you keep at your house at all times, but when you go out, you throw it in the trunk, and then when you're heading home, you have something go wrong with the car, you just let that thing loose and follow it. Okay. Why don't you know how to get home? I don't. I, apparently, the pythons can't make it back to Burma, so don't blame me about not being able to get back to my house. <laughs> also, are you training the python to take city streets, or is he going to be <laughs> right. cut and brush? Because your car... Yeah. Oh, well, you get out of the car and walk. The car's broken down at this point, right? Oh. The GPS is out. The car's broken down. You have to follow the python through the Everglades to get home. Is it hard to keep up with the python? Do they? Do no. They... No, they don't move. The, they, even no. at their fastest it's speed, like, they don't It's move faster that fast. than you think, but you can keep up. Yeah. Well, you walking at a good snap, you'd get yeah. it. And if you had like one of those, uh, one of those uh, shock collars on him in case he got too far. Right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Now, is it only like the 20 some odd radius that he can do? Like, how far do we think they can we don't go? Know. This, this was as far, they took him, I think the farthest they took one was 23 miles. Again, they weren't trying to figure this out. So, this was just kind of an accidental discovery. Yeah. They found it out. I'm sure follow up studies will try and see what the limits of this Is it are. like different terrain? Was it, or was it still in the Everglades? Still just in further? the Everglades. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm imagining all the comical places that you'd uh, have to follow your python through, like a lady <laughs> in the shower for some yeah. reason. That's <laughs> the path he took. It was yeah. the path of least resistance led me through this. I'm so yeah. sorry, ma'am. You know what? I'll catch up. I'm going to, I'm going to, Check this out. The backyard with the pool and someone tanning. It's like Ferris Bueller's Day yeah. Off. And trying to <laughs> exactly. Three, three doors with the stooges running between each one of them. <laughs> You'll start getting postcards from the snake. Like yeah. the gnome. Yeah. Like the Travelocity gnome. <laughs> Like the, like the Forrest Gump. Like you'll see major moments in history. Right. Like or what Watergate about... Watergate. <laughs> what about how about this? What if instead... What if major companies started utilizing this resource, and instead of using that whole aerial drone idea, what if Amazon just used pythons to deliver all your, your boxes? You know, you, again, you had a python in your house, and then when you wanted something, Amazon would come pick up the python, take it back to their headquarters, <laughs> strap a package to it, and allow it to come back to you. I, I'm picturing, like, the customer service call, you know, where, like, you call Amazon, and like, how can I help you? And you're like, well, the snake showed up, but he's got... A Big square shaped belly. Sorry, ma'am. We'll My send it shipment back. of rats never made it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is rude. You promised me two day shipping. Yeah, there was just just kind of a snake shaped hole in the box. <laughs> also, those are not those rats must have been terribly injured because usually once you once a snake tries to eat one rat, the other one's clawed its stomach to try to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, we had um, my old roommate in grad school. We he had a python, I believe it was python, and he gave it a rat before he went on a vacation to feed it. And I came in home from work, and this rat had eaten through the stomach of the snake and left this huge hole. I mean, it was the size of my fist. This hole, and it's like from the inside out or the outside in? No, the outside in. Wow! Yeah. So and the, like, so the snake couldn't catch it it was like too weak I don't, we're not sure like oh. but basically it was too weak to get the rat it, I don't i've never seen anything like it it was terrifying i've owned a snake i don't know how they survive like uh, we would feed them baby mice like young mice you take the bag the paper bag and you smack it up against the wall to stun the mouse because we didn't do <laughs> that before stun the mouse. and this like toddler mouse was just fucking up this snake's face and we had like grabbed the mouse to pull it its claws were sunk into the into the snakes yeah. how they survive like how in nature i like how you're, you're trying to separate two dudes from a bar fight you're like hey hey bro get back get back it's cool <laughs> yeah. it's cool the mouse was getting the upper hand the yeah. snake the snake i guess just wasn't ready to eat right then but after we stunned it it was like okay i can eat now yeah like they're very particular about when they decide to eat i mean the snake wasn't doing anything and it was huge it had to have been doing it for overnight it was well, disgusting so. maybe it's a fetish like the snake asked him, like, Maybe. hey, I have a cannibal fetish. It's like, like autoerotic asphyxiation because he would eventually have died. Or maybe the snake knew he was like, listen, rat, only one of us is going to make it out of this cage. <laughs> I love you. I Eat love me. you. <laughs> I give you permission. They're going on vacation, man. Who knows when they'll be back? You're right. Maybe it was just a really sad snake that wanted to commit suicide by rat. But the rest of us were home. <laughs> it was only him who went on vacation. <laughs> And you let this happen? Yeah. Oh, no. I went in there. I got the rat out. I pulled snake the snake out. Services. I dumped two tubes of Neosporin inside and bandaged it up. And he actually came back to life and was fine. Wow. It filled in. It was pretty remarkable. You can see, like, bones and everything. It was cool. Wow. All right. Let's move on to Tell Me a Story. Tell me a science story. They're like children's stories, only with less sex and more science. I got an interesting story from the world of astronomy and uh, trying to find other animals and other people and other living beings out in the universe. Uh, this concerns mainly SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. 
But it goes all the way back to a guy named Freeman Dyson, who theorized a while ago in the, the first half of the 20th century, something called a Dyson sphere. It's like the ball on the vacuum, right? Yeah, it's a ball on the vacuum that allows you to pivot with a, a zero turn rate. It never loses suction, The ever. movie Sphere was based loosely based on this, yes. about an alien sphere. This is actually a different <laughs> Dyson, not the vacuum guy. This is a guy, a, a scientist. Uh, he was a mathematician and a physicist, and he theorized... Well, about you... ballless technology. <laughs> <laughs> pivot technology. He, he theorized, like, what are you going to... What do future civilizations do? How are they going to utilize their resources better? How are we going to capture more energy? Energy is the thing that we need the most, right? So think of solar panels. We set up solar mm -hmm. panels on Earth, but then we can only get the sun that shines on Earth. Mm -hmm. So his idea was something called a Dyson sphere, which is basically a loose collection of energy gathering things surrounding a sun. So if you imagine a whole bunch of maybe even sometimes planet sized satellites surrounding the sun in a giant sphere, like a globe that collects almost all of the solar energy coming off the sun. And then that allows that very advanced society to utilize all of that energy. Essentially it's like turning a sun into a big furnace and you've got a, a steam engine working on the edge of it. How big is the extension cord? that they release to, to, heat, to connect oh, it so from the collect sun. that. That's right. Yeah. You would do it without extension cords, hopefully. Huh. Yeah. Or you'd get one of the oh. Home Depot, like 300 footers and daisy chain a couple of them together. And of course there's duct tape. And those are expensive, by the way. If you try those 300 footers are really expensive. Yeah. Government cuts have gone deep into SETI's budget. <laughs> he didn't come up with the idea himself. He came, kind of came up with the technical aspects of certain parts of it. The, it actually was borrowed from a 1937 science fiction book called The Star Maker as all good science is. And the, the shell or the ring of solar energy gathering material, think of it as being uh, as circling the sun. So what you would get would be the sun would be putting input into that, putting energy into that, but there would only be infrared energy coming out because the, the actual thing itself would be absorbing all of that visible light spectrum. So now what SETI is doing is switching their search to start looking for more of these infrared signals that would signify a sun that is being essentially covered up by a Dyson sphere as part of their way of looking for another advanced civilization. And when they find things that kind of look like it, because dust clouds can kind of provide the same type of information, then they start training their radio telescopes on it to see if they can hear any radio transmissions from the areas that might have Dyson spheres on them. That's an insanely complicated way to harvest energy. Why don't they set it to look for coal power plants or... Coal power plants, hard to find, interstellar, or from, from a different planet, very hard to find. Uh, a little bit easier to see somebody obscuring an entire star. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So. Uh, it's neither here nor there, really. So this is a, a really interesting thing because this is when people talk about, oh, you know, what about aliens? There is actually a very guided, very precise uh, scientific search for extraterrestrials mm -hmm. done through SETI, which is a search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It used to be part of NASA, has since become its own entity. They're going and using scientific methodology to try and find where aliens are. And, and to this find is, out why they like our sweet butts so yeah, much. Yeah, cow butts too. Huge mm. into cow butts. Oh, God. What, what is it about our two species of butts? Right. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I see one, but the cow butt, it's not a bear butt. That's yeah. Not, you know, yeah, it's definitely. You know, and this might be a, a sampling error. It might be that we just know about their cow butt and human butt interactions. They might be going for butts everywhere, and we're just not aware because we don't have that much interaction with, like, python butts. Is this planet known for its butts? We're the Brazil of the universe, basically. <laughs> that's why I think that's why so many Brazilian women win Miss Universe. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go, because... We're a butt planet. Most of the universe is a butt Most, planet. Right. Yeah. But there is this really uh, advanced scientific search for aliens. If we're going to find aliens, chances are we're going to be found by these guys because they know what they're doing. They're looking for signatures like radio waves. They're looking for things like Dyson spheres. They're postulating what we would find and, and out there searching for it. It's much less likely that a random farmer in Alabama is going to contact an alien than it is that one of these people who are out there desperately searching for this type of stuff will. When you're looking super far off, you're going to miss the aliens zooming towards. You can only see the aliens with a camera late at night uh -huh. at dusk. That is literally, and by an airfield, yeah. right. usually. Right. <laughs> or a military base. If we eventually get to the point where we would be using a Dyson sphere, if you could imagine us putting a whole bunch of man-made objects that are basically satellites in space surrounding the sun, hopefully it would be, we would do it a little bit past the Earth and not in front of it, which would kind of suck. <laughs> Block our view. <laughs> yeah. You would create this big giant thing and all those solar gathering things would get all of this energy and maybe you're out there living on those satellites as human beings maybe we have a way to to funnel that energy to earth and other planets that we then occupy 
but this is an idea of building you need this people, thing. You need people uh -huh. on the thing to plug the extension That's cord right. in when yeah. right. somebody pulls it too hard at the bottom. Like it's like going to start with prisoners. You're going to no, need the space like version. Prisoners of, on death row that we don't want here. Yeah, you'll need the space version of roughnecks out there, you know, working the oil wells. <laughs> You're like the guy running the lighthouse. You're just the most reliable person that nobody wants to live yeah. with. It's in like the, the cast of Armageddon. There you go. All the riffraff. <laughs> So uh, the Dyson Sphere collecting energy from the sun, Yeah, that's really no different from me taking this fork and shoving it in an electrical socket. It's incredibly different. That's There's not... no purpose. You're not generating any energy from doing that. You're actually just electrocuting yourself. Wait. Right. Right. You no! So he, Damien just jammed a fork, pre-prepared, by the way, middle tongs bent out uh, so that the, the, the outside tongs would fit into an electrical socket. And he has shocked himself seemingly unconscious at, a, at an absolutely horrible time, by the way, because I, 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 I was going to announce, we're about to do call-ins. Damn it. It's the one segment Damien constantly misses every time. And he was so excited about making it this time. I don't know. And he's literally on uh, – Jackie, is, is his pulse still going? Is he alive? Oh, I don't want to touch him. I don't see him breathing, that's for sure. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's breathing. Well, I mean, we have to take calls. We have people waiting. Yeah. Go ahead. Call in. Hot scientists are standing by to answer your questions. Ooh, a question. We're going to go ahead and, and take our first call. Uh, okay, on line one, we have Carl. Carl, I'm going to apologize to you real quick. We were, we're supposed to have three people hosting. We just had a, a traumatic event happen in studio. There's, there's only myself and Jackie, but yeah. please feel free to, to ask anything. Uh, uh, Carl in Los Angeles, what, what are you up to, Carl? Your studio drama doesn't concern me. I am looking for the one you call Richard Dawkins, and I know he was here. Uh, okay, well, first of all, uh, Carl, interesting, weird voice there. Uh, Richard Dawkins, an interdimensional, actual gay version of Richard Dawkins, called in a while ago. Yeah, Indeed. it wasn't like I Richard I am well Dawkins. aware of how this Dawkins can travel. Uh, was he here trying to uh, sleep with one Damien Mercado? Actually, yes, that, yeah, was, he's... that was his, it was an odd purpose, but yes, if you, for those of you listeners who didn't hear it in, in a previous episode, an interdimensional version of Richard Dawkins, who happened to be gay, mm -hmm. uh, called up looking to try and sleep with Damien, he was jumping from different universe to different universe, trying to right. have sex with as many versions of Damien as possible. Sir, can I ask you, what is your concern in this, and who are you? Well, my name is Carl Sagan. Carl and Sagan, the scientist. Carl Sagan? Well, yes, I, I go by Carl Sagan. Oh, that's right. You guys have not discovered transdimensional travel. Yeah. This... I would have been, by the way, a couple weeks <laughs> ago, I would have minute. been blown away by this. But Wait after, a minute. <laughs> after having to talk to gay Richard Dawkins for a while, I, I do realize that there are other universes that have more advanced technology than us, and apparently you travel around. But I, I'm but still blown Carl, away. I'm excited. I, I am too. Carl Sagan is dead in our universe. Well, I was going to say it was exactly like the Carl Sagan of your universe oh. in that... He has a robotic skeleton, just like me, a RoboCop-esque robotic exoskeleton integrated seamlessly into my flesh and neural hold network. Up, hold Wait, up. Wait, we hold definitely, up. even when he was alive, he wasn't that yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carl Sagan, one of my idols. Uh, a Your science... Carl Sagan did not fall in combat? No, no, um... wasn't, wasn't a big fighter. Carl Sagan in our universe. Then I am nothing like the Carl Sagan of your universe. Are Other you... than that, I was a I wonderful say, scientist. You could say he, he yeah. fights lies. I, I mean... Was, he was always seeking was the he truth. Ser was he sergeant of arms of the council? No, what, he couldn't have which been. Council? I'm the only what council? <laughs> a council of powerful scientists who control the universe. Dawkins, or the one you call Richard, is responsible for breaking the prime directive for transdimensional travel. I'm here to bring him to justice. Is that like Star Trek, the prime directive? You guys aren't. What's the prime directive for your, your council? The prime directive for our council is you must never interfere in a culture that has not discovered transdimensional warp drive. Makes sense. Huh. Also, no butt stuff. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, that must be hard for gay oh, Richard Dawkins. Oh, he's gay. Oh, okay. man. He's Richard violating guys, all over the place. Hey, you know what? I know you guys are a lot more advanced than us, but maybe you want to think about your own social evolution as, as a species. and get. I and will get... not be lectured by somebody from a universe full of chimpanzee-related technology. I'm just I'm just saying maybe maybe you want to be per a little bit nicer to gay Richard Dawkins. Yeah. Perhaps the Carl Sagan of your universe was not known for killing. I'd like he, to well, say he wasn't? That... No. I am very different from your Carl Sagan. I address. I suggest that you address me with much more respect. Okay, so you you have some you're kind a of RoboCop. you have a RoboCop type exoskeleton mm -hmm. uh, that you wear around, and you are apparently hunting Richard Dawkins. Not that I blame him. Uh, when I still had genitals before the RoboCop surgery, I uh, found myself wondering what it would be like to have my first homosexual experience with Damien myself. He is a very attractive man. Damien's huge what in other universes. That? I know. I know. I wish he was awake for this. Well, you or guys, alive. I you don't... guys are very big in other universes too. I should say that. However, you oh. guys are both like the Ringo 
Indigo Star to his rest of the Beatles. Okay. Oh, Damien, is, well. Damien fills the role of three of the Beatles, and Jackie <laughs> yeah. and I apparently pick up Ringo. Well, you, you split it in half. It's okay. cold. But wow. I, must say I get the glasses. The way you guys talked about Richard Dawkins, it disappointed me that I would not get to torture the information out of you. You were very forthcoming. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, uh, he called in. I wish I could tell you more. He seemed to just be interested in having sex with Damien and leaving. Can I ask you a few questions? Because you're really interesting. You've yeah, been one of my here. idols for a uh, long time. Fine. What is your question uh, before I resume my search? Let me, let me just do a recap real quick for anybody listening. If you aren't familiar with Carl Sagan, he was an incredibly brilliant scientist. He did his the own. The most brilliant scientist, some would argue. Oh, okay. Oh, um, and humble. Yeah, certainly. super humble. He did a <laughs> bunch of uh, important stuff on his own as a scientist and then kind of became the public figurehead of science education. It's probably the most prominent science educator uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of public interaction of all time. He did a bunch of specials and a bunch of video stuff back in the time before that was done. And, of course... And in some universes, some amateur pornography. It, okay. But not, not ours. Be not before that not was ours. done. Yeah. Uh, was that Robo? I, I, just do, I, I would have nothing to talk about with your Carl Sagan. I guess not. <laughs> and then Carl Sagan of our universe came out with the very influential uh, TV series Cosmos, which has mm -hmm. uh, uh, changed finally. many lives. And it's, it's just being rebooted. Have you seen the new reboot yeah. with Neil deGrasse Tyson? What did you... I, there was a... Cosmos being hosted in this dimension, hosted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, actually. he just it's, it's going on right now. It's yeah. a reboot of the original. You and... will not speak his name in my presence. That is my mortal enemy in every universe. Tyson, really? Whoa. He was my in our universe, they were friends. Yeah, before he died. Our relationship uh, parallels Obi Wan and Darth Vader. Wow. He went to Whoa. the dark side, and that's not a race thing. Before any, I know this is a very primitive dimension. As far as well, Darth Vader was technically a white guy, so I, th I think that's fine. You, that was the only non-racist answer one could have given. <laughs> that's, that's true. I commend so, you for that in your evolved. What, is this because you think Neil deGrasse Tyson is gay? Well, in the, the universe I'm from, he certainly is. Uh -huh. um, it's what's kept him out of uh, the foundation. Oh, okay. And also, stealing my cosmos will not bode well at the next interview he has. <laughs> oh, so you're angry that he, ha he is now hosting the new series of Cosmos? I am upset that my enemy is given a chance to even audition for the club, of which I am the sergeant at arms. Uh -huh. Oh, you're the you're the guy who who regulates when it comes to this council. You make sure. Why do you think I am hunting Mr. Dawkins? Oh, there, he that has, has broken yeah. the code. I must find him Our and bad. assess a fine. I guess that makes sense then. <laughs> okay, so you just hate Tyson because he's stolen Cosmos from you in this universe. What I've done, you, hey Tyson, if you're listening to this, how about you do something original, like create your own show? I did. It was called Cosmos, and you stole that from me. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you thought. didn't steal it from him. Okay. Uh, okay, well, shoot. Uh, I, I, what can we do for you, man? Listen, How can we I've answered you? your question. Enough time to play around. I need for you to call to Dawkins. Do you have it? Do you have a way of contacting him? Your D dimension does not have a way of contacting no, trans-dimensional he, he was, he was, he was very odd. elusive. Yeah, he was but you know what, though? If you remember, he did give us his Twitter. It was Gay Richard oh, Dawkins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damien's Twitter buddies with him. Let me just grab his cell phone out of his... A uh, corpse pocket, real uh, quick. Um, I think he's twitching. Okay, all right. Uh, send out a tweet to Dawkins. What, what would bring him in? He what likes Damien, all... right? We could we could use Damien as yes. a look. Using Damien's You know what? Go into ability. Damien's phone. I'm sure if you go in the photos, there's going to be some compromising right. picture that we could tweet out. And I'll just if put, anything, will get him before here. Before you tweet, do not compromise your position. He's certainly going to call in. When he does, I need enough time to trace the line. I need for you to stall him. Have you wrote that tweet yet? Uh, I'm, I'm typing it right now. It's a, uh, it's a, Damien has a picture of his bare ass. Uh, Perfect. I don't know why. And I'm, ty I'm, I'm typing one that says open for business. His hashtag reputation. open for business. Uh, yeah. Hashtag Richard Dawkins. Okay. There we go. Um, you see, that's something Damien can get along with the Damien in every universe. I feel like I would have never gotten along with the Carl Sagan. We are <laughs> already getting a call in off our tweet. We're line two. Okay. Holy hold on. Hell. I'll be you, quiet. You got to stay quiet there. You, you good, Sagan? Okay. I'm good. Here we go. Keep it together. Uh, Line two, is this Richard again? Richard. Hello, hello, yes. Um, I'm calling. Uh, is Damien there? Is Damien oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I told you that. Wow. Picture it's great it. to hear from I you again. How are you doing? I, I had to sprint to a phone. Um, I, I, I'm calling in. Listen, listen. I'm, Interdimensional I'm not, phone at that. I'm not here to talk about my technology. I'm here to bone Damien. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, of course. Let me just ask you something real quick, Richard. What's your exact location right now? Oh, my exact location? Well, I'm actually in your universe right now. There's a You're in place. our universe? Yes, there's a place called you, I'm Fire I'm kind of offended that you didn't contact us when you came to the universe, by the way. I, I, came, here, you something. I came here for some touching of Fanny, the American definition, oh. and I'm here at Fire Island. It's a lovely oh. place you guys have. It's very oh. reminiscent of, of my universe. Fire Island. Mm -hmm. Well, Richard, I, I got somebody here who would like to talk to you. Uh, Hello, if, Richard. Uh, is that Carl Sagan? 
I knew it. <gasps> oh, my God. I know what you've done. I knew I couldn't hide it from you. You're too good. You're Richard, too- I'd like to say I'm sorry, by the way, for setting you up like this. He's scary. I'm not, I can't fight RoboCop saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have known that the Damien in the, giving him a romp in the sack was too good to be true. I've, I failed for this. I walked yeah, right into this. I'm you really com- did. I'm coming for you, Dawkins. You cannot hide. Well, first you must catch me. Dawkins, vanish. It was wonderful calling for your show. Thank you for the cooperation. I must go. Oh Bye, second. God. Wow! Oh my god! I can't that, we have the happened. best calls, by the way. We, I can't even that for, especially happened. for a science show, we get a lot of really interesting calls. I can't believe Damien has missed everyone. He's, he's, <laughs> he's still technically alive. Oh, 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 oh! You know what? In hindsight, then it's it's nothing like the Dyson sphere. It is nothing. No, like that. it really isn't. How are you well, doing? I told you. We should stay away from this technology. It's too great for man. That was just Actually, a fork and an outlet. Oh, again. Yeah, that had yeah. nothing to do with the Dyson sphere. Which one of you took off my pants, shit in them, and then put my pants back on? Me. But also, uh, come on, I you knew it was going to be Bobby. <laughs> Pardon my phone. Oh, how was how uh, did, did we do calls yet? Am I too late for calls? No, we did calls. Oh, we did uh, calls. I missed it again. Yeah, it was just. a I dude. mean, you were here technically. Yeah. Not a big deal. You were on the floor withering, but next time though, ne- you're really going to get it. Next time you're going to be here, no matter what. Yeah. You, you say that, and you know what? Next time, next time, next time. You know what? You know what we're going to do this time? We're going to go right on to finish my story. Finish my story, where one of us has to complete the other's balls. That's right. This is finish my story, where I challenge my two contestants slash co-hosts to finish the end of this scientific headline. You guys ready to play? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Scientists have found that urinating in the pool is found to produce what result? Delicious drinking water. Blonder children. Oh, so we got water that tastes better. Now, Damien, why would the, the pee water taste better? I think it's twofold. I think it's your first uh, it's your first foray into the yellow arts of okay. sex. Sure. And that's not an Asian <laughs> thing before yeah. any of you jump okay. on that. Okay, okay. Thank you for clarifying. Although... In, you can pay somebody in Asia to do it for you relatively inexpensively <laughs> when compared to the States, and that's just a market thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I think it's your first foray into the sexual fetish, and it's, yeah, it's a little, it's a little refreshing sometimes to, to go and take a glass into some pool water at a public pool and just So is that what you do? You, you hang out at the, the pool during summertime yeah. and just drink glasses of yeah. chlorinated pool water? Urinating in pools creates sexual fetishes and delicious drinking water. Okay. All right. Uh, Jackie, would you like to explain your answer a little bit? Um, so mine comes from the age-old adage that uh, being in the pool will turn blonde hair green. Oh. No, no, no. Now the kids are peeing a lot more. The chlorine isn't doing the green. Uh-huh. Instead, the pee is doing the yellow. That's right. Wow, that's pretty scientific. Yeah. Uh, both of you are close. I'm going to give it to Jackie on this one. <laughs> Turns out <clears throat> when, you, uh, when you pee in the pool... If the pool is chlorinated, like almost all pools are, that the urine mixes with the chlorine to form trichloramine and cyogen chloride. Uh, both are associated with lung problems as well as heart and central nervous system issues. What? And so... Pee- pool party's over, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Peeing in the pool could can very well be causing chemicals that could be causing a lot of damage to you. You do get a little bit of it from sweat, but about 90-some-odd percent of any of the active chemicals that are in the pool that are interacting with this chlorine come from urine. So, oh, so it's better to shit in the pool than it would be to pee in the pool. I think both of those are bad. It's I more think hygienic. Can, well, you can get a lot of problems with shitting in the pool, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 but I mean, like, it's, if it's chlorinated, it kills yeah. the thing. Like, you know, if, like, it kills, it kills no, you, microbial life. Nah, you're still, you, you still got shit on you. That's still a problem. <laughs> well, I mean, it's gross, but it's, it's not unhygienic. No, it's very unhygienic. I think it's unhygienic. Incredibly unhygienic. <laughs> huh. I guess I've, 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 heard, I've heard different. I'm going to ask you guys this. What should be the new punishment for peeing in the pool? Oh. <laughs> Well, before it was don't pee in the pool, it'll turn blue and everyone will know about it. I've never now seen that happen. I've yeah. never, been pe- to pool I've never I've, seen it either. And I know people are peeing in it yeah. nonstop. I'm but just... now you can tell them the truth and say, don't pee in the pool. You're going to have a heart attack yeah, and brain damage. <laughs> you're messing up our lungs. Well, Damien, you mentioned that you were in the pool with a lot of people who were peeing in it. I've always wondered, if you're in the ocean and you're swimming around, fine, pee, pee your heart out. But like in a pool, who is doing the pool peeing? Is it lazy people, really scared people, drunk people? Like who is doing the actual peeing I think peeing it's everybody. Lazy for sure. Okay. 
when it comes to kids, there's a lot of kids who are sort of in that age group of, I just learned how to go to the bathroom or I just got out of the, the diaper phase. And they're like, eh, this is like a, like a gray area in the pool. I'm going to go ahead and wing it. I think there are a lot of, there's a generation of adults. Cause I know adults who do this, who just yeah. didn't grow up properly shamed for things. Right. And like when, when they peed in the pool, nobody called them out. But here's what I don't yeah. get. Number one, if you're in the pool all day and one dude doesn't go to pee, isn't that suspicious? N- number, <laughs> right. Number two, I've been in the ocean or and doing something and you pee. There is a distinct warm spot around you. And if somebody pees around you, you know about it. And that's with currents moving and cold water. If you're doing it in a pool, forget the blue thing. Can't everybody tell the second you start peeing in a pool? Heated pools. No, yeah. Yeah, pools are heated. Number two, since we found that you you can't pee in the pool, is it still safe to urinate on a billiards table? Yes. Yes. That that pastime. I mean, it 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 makes it arguably harder to hit to get your shots. But no, very little health hazard. Yeah. That type of pool peeing is totally okay. Right. Not so much chlorine in there. So now that we've found out that, uh, that urinating in the pool can actually cause very dangerous chemicals, if we have catch that person, I think we should come up with a very elaborate form of public shaming. I think we should all pee on them. Oh. Okay, I think you're going to get a certain amount of people who are doing it intentionally. <laughs> like, oh, guess I guess my face is the toilet now. Oh, yeah, you're right. You got to make sure you don't encourage peeing in the pool. Right. There's an erection test. Like, if they get an erection, everybody stop. <laughs> Abort procedure. So what what can we do to create a punishment that doesn't encourage sickos to do it in order to get punished? What if there was like a scarlet letter? What if letter? you made them drink their own pee? Scarlet, Ooh, letter, scarlet letter for pool peeing. What would the, would it just be a pee? I, it I, had I, to be a big P, a capital P. P, P right? What if all pools were had lifeguards? Every pool has the blue thing. So if he sees it, he gets to kick you in the groin. Or appoint somebody. Like if you're guarding <laughs> your groin, all he gets to appoint a family member to do it. <laughs> but that gets But I get... like the idea of marking somebody so that they can't go in the future to another pool in another yeah. state and start ruining lives. Yeah, a la girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you etch it into their skin. Yeah. And now everybody knows. So maybe a giant P over the left peck. Someplace where you'd have to show if you were in a pool type situation. Yeah. And like he, he takes off his shirt. <gasps> Everybody knows it instantly. So the thing, if you're the fat guy who wears a shirt to go swimming, I feel like, you know, this, this doesn't affect the fat, the fat dude here. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's right. safe. You know or, or the guy who goes to the tattoo shop and makes it a B. Oh, you know, you know what we might be able to do then? Brand. You have to brand then. <laughs> what about this? And this would also be more direct to what they're doing. What if you tattooed what looks like a stream of urine going down one of their legs? Like, that was the sign, because you always have to wear a bathing suit to go in, so even right. if you wear the shirt, you're not covered that up, and it's more direct. People, Nobody sees it and goes, oh, is his name Peter? Like, is he really into some oh, girl totally. named Patricia? They're just like, oh, he's got the urine leg. Got that urine. is a pool pee. Urine leg. The, the you're urine in trouble, gets, mister. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but what if you were wearing, like, one of those old 1920s bathing suits? Even then, those that's... went up high. Those didn't go down to your leg. Yeah, they went, is, they um, went we're down talking your knee. Ur- yeah, we're talking a urine stream that goes all the way down to the ankle. I am a Saudi Arabian woman, and I just peed in the pool. Impose consequences on me and whatever swimwear I wear. I mean, she's going to get beaten for being a woman anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, think, I think that she's had her I place. I, I'm pretty sure they don't swim in burkas, if that's what you're insinuating. I, I'm sure there's like some sort of, it looks like a wetsuit, but there's some sort of suit <laughs> that like, you know, except it covers the mouth and nose as well. I think this is the best we're going to do. All right, so we're going to start tattooing pool peers on the leg with what looks like a stream of urine coming down one of their legs. Uh, and after that, we're going to go kill some pythons and maybe do some coke so that we can forget about killing pythons. <laughs> and then uh, Damien's going to hook up with his arch nemesis, which is the Genghis Khan of grizzly bears. And hopefully <laughs> none of that interferes with our electrical collection with our Dyson sphere. Guys, this burning is really bad. I think you got to can, can somebody drive me to the hospital afterwards? No. I'll drop you off in front, but I'm not going I'm, in. I would prefer you don't even do that. All right. Bye. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. I'm really dizzy, guys. Damien, come on. Join us next week on Science Faction. <laughs> I'm not dragging him out. You've been listening to Science Fiction. Wait, that's not right.